Yeah, welcome to this video. We play a tournament this time. It's just six players and uh, three minutes a game. So I would assume that this uh, video lasts like uh, half an hour, maybe. Um, what I need to do now is to play quickly because I like to lose on time or to play play very slowly. So this is not the thing I should do here uh, in a three minutes game. So we have a, a Budapest Gambit. Uh, bishop e4 is a normal move. Yeah, and here the old trick is to play queen e7, and if a3 he takes, take, and maybe there is a mate on d3. But I just avoid this by playing e3 immediately. So let's just develop here. And then I want to castle. And. I I saw the move bishop d6, which looks a little bit strange, but I think it's not that bad. Um, okay, here. I didn't want to take the pawn because you could just take here the uh, the bishop. Yeah, and here it is, bishop d6. As said, I think it's not as bad as it looks, but um, I win some time. So I want to avoid queen b4. I'm uh, a bit better developed here, so uh, this is a good thing about this uh, position. And he he has problems to develop his bishop. So if b6, I simply play bishop f3. Um, the knight. Okay, let's castle. He also threatened something like knight d3 check, which uh, yeah would be a bit annoying. So um, he weakens his uh, king side a lot. So I think I try to push for c5 now. And maybe I just uh, uh, exchange queens with knight e4. Queen would also be good on d4, my queen. So, um, hmm. Yeah, he wants to push for g4, but I, I, I think I just attack his his knight here. He cannot play g4 now, and. Um, Does he really want to push for f5? That would be, that would be strange. Mm. Okay, let's let's open up the position because I'm uh, better developed. This is why I want to open lines here. Maybe d uh, queen d4 here in this position is good. But I think I first take. I take with the bishop, right? Take with the bishop. He takes with the bishop. I play queen d4. Well, but he can maybe push even for. Hmm. Well, I think I just played simple here. Um, taking here. Yeah, well, I just I exchange everything, so I think the end game is won. So I um, I just need to take care now about the time. This is what I said at the beginning of the game. So he takes on d6, hopefully. 
otherwise I take on c7. Okay, let's protect um, this pawn. And then I put pressure on, on the h pawn. Yeah. Okay, let's also try to fight against uh, the pawn here on d6, which is unprotected uh, in the sense that there's no pawn that can uh, guard this his pawn here. Um, yeah, he threatens to, to take here now with the rook, so this is why I move my king. Oh, he still threatens to take with the rook because this rook was unprotected. Um, what about g5 here, just to win some some space? And now I'm, I'm threatening to play f4 and f5. Yes, f4 and f5 with a threat. I can also play maybe g3 here. Um, yeah, f5. So it's check and this, this uh, rook is uh, captured. So his rook is hanging. Okay. So, first game, first win. And... Yeah, I don't know if I really have time here now to analyze. I like uh, the idea of bishop d6 when I saw it the first time. And I think it's it's quite good to get rid of my uh, bishop pair. Um, so, idea aims. It's an English opening. Maybe we switch to a normal yeah, King's Indian here. Yes, this is what we do. And it's a classical variation. Castling. D5. This is all played thousands of times. Um, 91, B4. Yes, this is played quite often. The bayonet attack. Um, Bishop A3 is a normal move here. Yeah, so now let's uh, try to use a square f4 for my knight. Yeah, he plays it uh, um, very good. So, um, yeah, these are all the standard moves. Um, knight g5 is often very uncomfortable for me because you can jump to e6. Um, I don't care now about this pawn here. Mm. Yeah, g3 to kick my knight away again. I want to push for g4 now. He can use the square here on e4 for his pieces. So um, if he takes on f5, I think it's not that bad. Um, I, I just want to, you know grab as much space now as I can. Um, here I have however the square d4 for my knight. And I think this is quite a strong square. So he will push for c5, yeah this was clear. I think there is hardly a, a thing I can do here. Uh, despite taking, um, maybe bishop f5 very quickly. Okay, I try to argue that this pawn becomes weak, but this is not clear at all. Um, Rook a5 maybe now. Oh, there is no square for the queen, right? If I play this. 
Okay. Yeah. So. Um. Is there a perpetual? No, I don't think so. And my maybe this his uh. Knight gets a bit stranded here. I want to avoid knight to g um, g5. So this is why I played this one. Um, maybe I can play something like uh, knight f3 here later. H h4 maybe also. I need to keep my or uh, need the attack going. Um, Why didn't I play knight f3 first? What did I do here? So this is a self pin, but um, maybe the idea is to play. Eighteen seconds. Ah. Why did he do this? Fourteen seconds left. Need to make pre moves. Ten seconds left. Unfortunately, I don't have time. Okay, he just wants to win on time. Um, knight. Well, so this was in the last last uh, second, I guess. Okay, wow, two seconds. Yeah, sorry for not commenting that much at the end. I was just struggling to survive and to uh, find the right moves here in the, in, at the end. I think this game was very tactical. And uh, yeah, I mean, the King's Indian is often uh, leading to complicated games. And it's a one or nothing situation. Um, so here I just want to make a calm setup now after the struggle. So, um, yeah, the Italian game, very uh, cautious setup I choose here. Um, let's see. I just develop simple uh, the pieces, and I think if he doesn't exchange now here, I uh, play bishop b5, and maybe retreat the bishop to c2. Okay, he opens up the position. Um, I think I keep the tension a bit. If he takes on e4, I will take back with my um, with my pawn. I think. He has uh, found a weakness here in my camp. This is a f square d3. Um, but I threaten now to take here on uh, c6 and then on e5 so he needs to do something about this um, I like to have uh, the good pawn structure in this case and now I, I simply threaten to play knight c4 again attacking e5 so I will try to um, put pressure on the e-pawn and I, I need to develop my my bishop um, I don't know actually what the queen is doing there. Maybe queen a6, okay. Yeah, this is a possibility. Um, okay. I want to, to, 
to, to quickly develop so I am Bishop e3 is my next move yeah this knight wants to jump to c4 I thought the knight wants to jump to c4 so um, here I just move my queen to c2 I think the knight would be much better here on c4 than the, than the bishop what I can do now is also to play maybe even knight a5 or I can try something like c4 and push for c5 the, the, th the knight doesn't have that many squares here um, so if he takes my bishop is very strong on c5 and my next move will be b3 even though he plays this move b3 is still in the air so yeah let's do this if he takes takes I can take back uh, here with my rook Okay, and then afterwards I think I will follow up with uh, c4 and then I threaten to take the bishop if he goes to e6 and then playing c5 so maybe he takes now uh, my knight okay but here c5 is simply winning I think f4 Okay. He can play f4. Why didn't he play f4? Here I just attack his queen. Maybe I just don't take on c5 but take on e4 with my queen first, threatening a mate. This is also an option. There's nothing threatening, so I just take here. And then I take on b6 and queen c4 and everything is, uh, is fine. Um, well, I just take here directly. Okay, this was the third game. I mean, it started very calmly, and uh, I think here a uh, black missed the uh, the outpost c4 for his knight. A knight on c4 is very strong. It takes b2 and also the bishop, and you can see that this bishop is quite important. Um, yeah, I think this is all normal. But why doesn't he play knight before? And um, then he gets my bishop on. Uh, on e3 and this bishop is quite strong it controls square c5 which was a nice outpost for my uh, my pieces later later in the game so he had the problem that I destroyed his, um, his pawn structure um, I gave up my bishop but um, you can see that the square c5 is not possible to uh, attack with any kind any pawn um, so this was a square I wanted to put my pieces on and as you could see later in the game um, this act actually happened even so here you you see that the knight is on, on c5 and yeah it's uh, quite a strong knight here um, all right next game against Georgian round four so I think one more game is left at the end a normal Queen's Gambit uh, declined knight f6 we choose the exchange variation and um, bishop e7 this is just uh, castling yes c6 are often played here um, we keep our options to play knight e2 f3 and this is weakening the position so I 
think I don't like h6 that much. Better is knight d7. Um, okay, I think I castle long. You can see that I'm fully developed now, and um, he is still uh, lagging development. So what about pushing for e4? Um, e4 is still in the air. Um, maybe he argues that he can just take. Okay, let's let's uh, move the the king out of any potential threats here on the c file and g. Um, here I think I push for e4. So I have a strong pawn center, and if he doesn't take, uh, I play e5. Here these two pawns protect all the squares on the fifth ring. Um, Hmm. Okay. Yes, here I can just uh, win the B pawn, which is a bit dangerous, maybe, but I think I will do this. So now knight uh, bishop b5, and then I will um, get rid of the knight here as well. Just exchange many pieces. Um, he has an attack now because the open because of the open b file, but I think I'm strong enough uh, to uh, because there are not that many pieces left, and I will just exchange pieces and. I hope my extra pawn will decide the game in the end. Um, he attacked d4. Yes, should I be play active or passive? I want to play active. So I'm putting my rook on f1 and attack f7 myself. This is the idea. Um, because he, he, he might also play f a5 in the near term. This is why I put my rook, uh, my, my king on a1, a5, a4 would be a bit annoying. Um, Does he threaten to take here? Rook a8 maybe as an idea, just to get rid of this uh, rook here. He takes and I take. Rook c1 maybe also. Hmm. Okay. If he takes, I will take back with the pawn, and I think this pawn will be right strong now. And this pawn is attacked as well. So let's push. Um, let's push this pawn. Simply threatening e7 and uh, e8, promoting the pawn. Yeah, he wanted to push uh, for d3 with a check. Um, all right.
So if he checks me, I have uh, queen d3. Yes. So this worked fine, and I can uh, win this endgame now very easy by just pushing uh, my pawns here. So he can't do anything at all now. Let's uh, save the uh, draw first. Seven seconds. What happened? Did he? Uh, did he resigned. Okay. I thought I lost on time. Five seconds. Wow. Okay. Last game, and unfortunately, I cannot comment on each game now, um, as I'm, 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 I, as I did in the other um, five-minute games, because we have time afterwards always. Here uh, we have uh, a Grand Prix attack, and I like. Uh, um, to play d5 here usually very quickly um, okay in this case we just take uh, take back here on, on on d5 I think yeah this all seems to be theory um, hmm Okay, let's develop. Just let's just simply develop here and get out uh, the king of this diagonal. I don't like the king to be here. And now I threaten to take on d4. So he gave away his bishop, but in exchange he has a very nice um, pawn uh, or um, destroyed my pawn structure here. Um, well, I think I almost need to play this, but it doesn't look too bad. I mean, uh, this diagonal looks very strong for my bishop. Okay, maybe knight f6 next move. He can protect it once, but then I play f5. It's all a bit shaky, but at least I want a pawn. Uh, I, I, I want a piece. So mm. I don't care if he gets two pawns for the piece. It should be good for me. And the bishop on e4 is now kind of a monster. It's very strong. Um. Now I want to fight for the d file. And then I put my uh, my uh, my bishop on f6. Yeah, I just want to get rid of pieces. So um, can I play even? Okay, let's play bishop d3. You can see that this bishop is a monster. It controls all the white squares, and uh, now I just threaten to take here on d4, exchanging even more pieces. Yeah, this is why he just gave up uh, the exchange here. But I mean, what does he want to do in this position? So I now threaten to take here on, on d4. He cannot protect it anymore. And I'm a whole rook up. So um, just simple. Uh, just played simple here. Um, okay. Push for e5 now. And. Yes, so I want to have some air for my for my king, 
and uh, then I just push now for e d2 and I threaten rook e1 with a checkmate yeah so um, it's mate alright so um, what can we see in this game I think white was much better in the opening than me um, yeah the Grand Prix attack is a nice opening in my view it's it's not that you play um, uh, these tactical or the the nice setups you have with black in the usual uh, uh, Sicilian it's just a completely different game normally it's uh, if you play it good with black there are no problems but it's very easy for white to develop his pieces and you can see that uh, he's very quick in development where my my pieces all look a bit shaky you need to take care and um, yeah this is why I also like to play uh, the Grand Prix attack sometimes with white again the Sicilian I think it's a good uh, opening and what is also um, quite nice you can try uh, here knight c3 uh, and the idea is to push for f4 later in the third move uh, and you avoid the lines uh, that uh, were happening here in this game because I think uh, after uh, immediate f4 the d5 moves was very good if you play um, c knight c3 here and you seem to be uh, it's a closed um, uh, a closed Sicilian uh, you just uh, um, bring the game into the um, Grand Prix attack but without the, the line uh, d5 because you, s you sometimes play g6 or knight c6 and this is all not uh, um, and then the, the, the d5 move is not possible anymore yeah so uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you soon